now a new documentary has told the shocking true story of parents mm. and teachers at a British school who were wrongly accused of being part of a satanic paedophile cult. The parents were subsequently stalked, threatened and abused by conspiracy theorists who believed the false allegations after the lies had been posted online. I mean, we both watched the documentary, didn't it's we, shocking. last night? And we've talked and talked about it. Mm. It's, it's almost unbelievable. One of the mums who is using the fake name Anna is here today alongside criminologist David Wilson. Good morning, Anna. Morning. Thank Good you for morning. having me. Thank you for coming on the show. OK, so let's go back to nine years ago. What happened on that day? It was Thursday, the 5th of February, 2015. Um, my husband and I were working from home that day and around about 4 p.m. an email arrived into our inbox from the school stating that there had been some allegations made about the school, but that it had been investigated by the police, mm -hmm. um, nothing else to report um, and that um, you know, the case was closed. So, of course, that kind of posed more questions than it answered and naturally Faith. it was like, well, what allegations? Mm. Uh -huh. So I, I went on to Google. I very quickly found the nature of the allegations um, and unfortunately for me, um, within about the next five minutes, I became aware that there Well, I realised that it was connected to um, two children in the school, one of whom had been in um, my daughter's class and I found very quickly um, three videos that existed on online at that time. Mm. Unfortunately, that video that I found um, was of the daughter in question making a series of allegations, mm. um, naming my daughter as also having been a child at the school that was being abused, um, sexually abused for sweets. And the person that was um, interviewing her in the video said, and who is it that, that's doing this to her? Mm. And then she named myself and my husband. So within five minutes of receiving the email from school, mm -hmm. I'd gone online, found the allegations, and then to my Snowballed. horror. And your daughter at this stage was just nine. She was nine, yes. There is a huge difference from an email coming from school saying there's been an accusation, mm. police investigate, it's nothing, to then suddenly seeing what those allegations were. I mean, I can't begin to imagine how you felt watching mm. these, this child that you knew that was in your daughter's class, firstly saying what they were saying, but then accusing you and your husband and, and your daughter being in a similar situation. Mm. Yes. I mean, it was, it was just one of those life-changing, heart-stopping moments. Yeah. I mean, the complete shock. And I do remember later that night, as I said in the documentary, sitting on the floor of my bedroom and saying to my husband, we've been accused of being paedophiles and this just isn't going to go away. You know, all of that, your life runs before your eyes and you know that, you know, there are groups of people that are going to believe this that there's no smoke without fire, that mm. there are groups of people who, you know, like to hunt and trap paedophiles. And, you know, I, I knew right then that our lives were going to change. So, so the police knew of these allegations and mm. they'd contacted you and said, look, we need to come over and interview your daughter. So you had to tell your daughter at the time about what had been said by her classmate. I did. Um, after I received the email from the school, I phoned the school, I, sp I spoke to the headmistress and she said, I've been advised to um, tell you to contact the police. So I literally called the police and said, I don't quite know how to explain this, but I've been accused of being a satanic paedophile and my daughter is um, alleged to have been one of the abuse victims. And the police operator put me on hold and then came back and said, OK, well, the police are on their way to your house. Mm. And I said, but my daughter's here and she doesn't know anything about this. Mm. And they said, well, you've got half an hour to tell her. Oh. And I sat her down in the kitchen with my husband and said that one of her school friends had made some allegations and she burst into tears and said, why is she saying these things about me? And I said, I don't know, but the police want to speak to us. So we, I, our family weren't afforded the luxury to separate her from that knowledge. The police mm -hmm. came to the house and they wanted to speak to all of us together. So I, I wasn't able to sort of separate her from the nature to of what was going her. on. Yeah, mm -hmm. to protect her from it. And in the end, the police didn't really do anything about it. There was a list that was published with names, addresses, photographs, terrible statements, just, just awful. I can't even imagine what that was like for you and the other mums. Mm -hmm. So there was a group of you that got together and decided we need to almost infiltrate this system to know what's going on here. Yeah, it was a tale of two halves. I mean, the, the initial police officers, you know, didn't know what to do with this case. It, no. was, it was online and, and, and the legislation, it did exist, but they were having trouble 
sort of dealing with it and, mm. and admitted they didn't quite know how to, to do so. Um, and after a number of years, there were some unsuccessful prosecutions that collapsed and um, other parents had been involved originally, but then felt um, that they'd lost confidence in the police. And there were a, a small group of us that were still left, I guess, that felt that this was just so wrong and we couldn't let it drop. And, you know, we went forward and we did a victim's rights review and we did manage to get sort of police officers and eventually the CPS, you know, to back us. Mm. But we all dealt with things in different ways. And yes, there was, you know, um, one of the mums ended up sort of being down the rabbit hole, if, if yes. so to speak. You get that from the documentary a lot. Absolutely. And in fact, you know, I'd, I'd had a conversation in the early days with a, a takedown company that is um, the expert in removing sort of yes. things from the internet. Yes. And they had said to me at the very beginning, you know, it's like whack-a-mole. You can try and take one thing down and then it will be it will pop back up on the internet somewhere else. But they did say, even to myself, the way to really deal with it is to get amongst them. Um, and, and that was kind of the avenue that Alice took. Yeah. You know, we all dealt with it in different ways, um, but that, that was her um, avenue. And actually we discovered that for, there was, you know, we'd had so many people against us on the internet, but there was also out there a, a group of people, you know, a number of people that felt that it was really wrong, as we did, that children's addresses and names were across the internet. So they came on board and it was, it was a great comfort to know that there, as for as many people that there were attacking us online, mm. there was also people supporting us. Yes. And Alice embedded herself in, in, with them and, Yes. And did you get, ever get any sense of why this had started? What on earth drove the parents of the children, or, or the, the, it was the mother, wasn't it, with her boyfriend of the children to make those accusations? And then for this other woman, Sabine uh, McNeil, to actually get so involved and so keen to sort of expose what she thought was going on in her Yeah, life. she wasn't even a trained no. lawyer. I think, you know, they're multi-million dollar questions, really, as, as to why they did what they did. Um, all I can say is that Abraham Christie had a prior history of doing yes. something very similar to his own family. Um, so th this was, you know, not new for him. Ella, I think when her children got taken into care, perhaps she felt that parents and the people on the list of the accused had been complicit in um, raising concerns and that was why um, her children had been taken from her and that in some way we were all responsible. Yes. Um, I think in making the allegations that she did, perhaps she thought that all of our children would also be taken into care in the same way that hers oh. had. Terrible. Um, David, we're going to come to you. Yeah. I mean, it, it's all fake. It was proven not true. And yet these conspiracy theories just get completely out of control on the internet. They're so dangerous, aren't they? They absolutely are. And the first thing to say, though, Kat and Ben, mm -hmm. is how brave of Anna to come in and again share her story yeah. with us. Um, the internet did not invent conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theories have been with us for centuries. But what the internet has done is make those conspiracy theories stickier. In other words, the, the, the internet acts as an echo chamber. People go onto the internet and they find like-minded people who believe like-minded things. And what that tends to do is therefore normalize what is patently absurd. It mm -hmm. simply therefore it escalates their beliefs that what they're saying, what they're theorising about is actually true. So that's, that's part of the context for this. But I think the other thing to say, and you were asking, and Anna was talking about motivation there. Mm. Mm. Remember, there are three main reasons why people begin to believe conspiracy theories. And I know the first two of these words sound a bit academic, but they're easily explained. So the three things would be, um, epistemic, existential, and social. Mm -hmm. Epistemic simply means that when something dreadful, traumatic happens, people want to find out why. Why has this happened? And what they're looking for is certainty. And so they go onto the internet and they look for certainty. And so often conspiracy theories are certain, whereas knowledge is often hedged by, um, you know, perhaps, maybe, uh, in most cases, mm -hmm. the, the existential thing, and then we're moving into why I think was what was motivating some of these people. Existentially, people want to feel safe and secure in their world. And then finally, social. People want to feel good about themselves. So they want to feel good about what they're thinking and therefore they want to identify with a group yeah. who thinks similarly. And as a consequence, that means that uh, they end up believing things 
which are patently untrue. Yes. It doesn't make it easier for it you, doesn't. Anna, to hear that. But how are how is your daughter, because they're over 18, 18 now, and the other kids, and how, how are you day to day now? They're, they're all good, thank you. I mean, yes, you're correct. All of the children are 18, 19. They're all moving on with their lives. Mm. They're, all, they're all doing well. Good. They're well adjusted. Good. They're all as they should be, mm. moving on with college and university. And, and, and how about you? Yes, you know, I think this will, this will always be the fabric of our, of our lives, yeah. unfortunately. Um, you know, the, the chatter's sort of lessened over the years. Mm. Um, but it's still there. Yeah. I think, you know, we've all learnt to sort of live with it. And, and I think we've chosen now to, to sort of tell our story. We're very keen, you know, there's been a growing narrative over the recent years about the harm of social media. Yeah. Um, and whether it's, and we don't place ourselves in the same category at all, but whether it's Molly Russell's father mm. or mm. Brianna Jai's, you know, family. Yeah. Yeah. I just think, you know, that social media has to begin to take responsibility for, for the material it's hosting. And what was so shocking for us is that, you know, we found it so hard to be able to take down those details. Social media would say to us, um, this does not breach our community standards, even though, you know, there were real children whose, yeah. whose names and addresses were on the internet. So Extraordinary. You know. Well, as David said, your bravery coming in and sharing absolutely. the story is, is what we can absolutely commend. And it's a big warning to it lots of parents other watching. Yeah, and the uh, documentary you. is on, uh, you can catch up on, on Channel 4. It really is an extraordinary watch, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Thanks, And Anna. thank you, David, as well. Thank you, David.